Morning, Monday, November 2, 2020. A third person who was shot in a mass shooting overnight in Westmoreland has died and 10 others are nursing gunshot wounds. A per- the person left and came back shortly thereafter where a number of shots were fired. Also developing overnight another outbreak of COVID-19 cases, this time at a facility operated by missionaries of the poor, 74 cases have been confirmed. In local politics, the latest on the PNP presidential election, both the Mark Golding and Lisa Hannah Camps have commissioned polls. And in international news this morning, in U.S. politics, the country's on course for its highest electoral turnout rate in more than a century, with some 92 million people having all already voted. The details coming up next. We begin this morning with news breaking overnight from White House in Westmoreland. Police are confirming a mass shooting in the community of Gordon in White House. 13 people were shot, at least three fatally, at a party that was in contravention of the Disaster Risk Management Act. According to the Constabulary Forces Corporate Communications Unit, CCU, the mass shooting happened after 11 last night. Head of the CCU Senior Superintendent Lindsay says two persons were confirmed dead. There was an illegal event that the police weren't aware of at a particular location. Sometime during that event, we understand that there was a dispute between persons at the location. I understand one of them could have been the promoter. A per- the persons left and came back shortly thereafter where a number of shots were fired. At the end of the shooting, the promoter for the event, as well as another person who was a patron, and other persons were shot and as you said we even know that two died but Nationwide has since learned that a third person has died. A source in Westmoreland is telling Nationwide News this morning that scores of people had gathered for a bike show where several bikers were performing stunts. The incident follows another similar mass shooting at an illegal party in Portmore St. Catherine on Saturday night. That illegal party turned deadly at about 11.30 p.m. when 11 people were shot, one fatally. The dead man has been identified as Kemar Tummings, otherwise called Night and Day. Police say Tummings was a top-tier member of the notorious Spanish town-based Klansman gang. Another man, Marcus Smith, who was wanted by the police for murder, was also injured in that mass shooting. The police say the patrons of the party had parked their vehicles on a church compound to avoid detection. Also developing overnight another outbreak of COVID-19 cases, this time at a Missionaries of the Poor facility. The Ministry of Health has confirmed it's identified a cluster of COVID-19 cases at a facility operated by Missionaries of the Poor. The Health Ministry said it's working with the faith-based organization to contain the spread. 74 positive cases have been identified at the Faith Center, which has been offering care to needy Jamaica since the 1980s. Six of the positive results were staff members. According to the health ministry, a total of 125 persons were sampled, 46 of them tested negative, while five results are pending. The ministry, in a statement last evening, said it's since engaged the missionaries of the poor to put in place a range of measures to slow transmission at the facility. The measures include adhering to the previous recommendation of no one in and no one out, continuing restriction of movement between residences and the ministries, strict adherence to the no visitors policy and cohorting as much as possible. The ministry also says staff are not to attend work if they are displaying symptoms of illness. It notes that current in-house staff will remain resident for another two weeks at minimum. In addition, the health ministry says meals will be served in disposable containers Residents with comorbidities will be monitored daily and movement within clusters is now restricted. It also says testing isn't going at other facilities run by missionaries of the poor and a full report is to be made available to the public as soon as the process is finalized.
Meanwhile, Health Minister Dr. Christopher Tufton says it remains vital that the people of Jamaica perform the various infection prevention and control measures. He insists that at no time should people become complacent as national efforts continue to contain the spread of the coronavirus. Minister Tufton is reminding persons to always wear a mask, frequently wash hands and practice physical distancing. In the meantime, Jamaica recorded two more COVID-19 deaths on Saturday, bringing the country's COVID-19 death tally to 209. The deceased are a 54-year-old male from St. Anne and an 89-year-old female from St. Catherine. An additional 107 persons have recovered from the coronavirus, bringing the country's recovery total to 4,617. Meanwhile, the health ministry reported 37 new confirmed coronavirus cases on Saturday. This brings the country's total number of confirmed cases to 9,131. In local politics, with just five days to the PNP presidential election, the battle of the polls takes center stage. Both the Mark Golding and Elisa Hanna Camps have commissioned polls. Data from noted pollster Don Anderson shows Golding inching past his opponent in a statistical dead heat. But a blue dot poll shows Hanna soaring in favorability among the Jamaican electorate as a more likely challenger to beat Prime Minister Andrew Holness. More in this report from Nico Lewis. Pollster Don Anderson says his team went into the field between October 24 and 28 and sampled just over a thousand Jamaicans, 18 years and older, in all parishes. The result? A statistical dead heat. This after an earlier poll done by Anderson's Market Research Services Limited MRSL showed Hannah leading in favorability by eight points. A month later and Golding has narrowed the gap, securing 45.9% of the responses, while Hannah managed 45.3%. But to, to sum up again, when we asked this question about the leadership race next week, it was dead heat. Dead heat, it is as statistically balanced as you could ever, 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 ever get. Less than one percentage point separated among the two questions that we asked about the leadership. And we asked two questions because of that, well... Maybe there's a little difference in the perception, you know, who you think is best suited, but who you prefer. Um, we thought we might have gotten a difference, but in each of them, less than one percentage point separated them. So that's a sort of we can get turned into a, an election among the delegates. Golding's campaign manager, Dr. Dayton Campbell, attributed the momentum to the credibility and freshness of the South St. Andrew MP. The country is responding positively to who Mark Golding is, what he stands for, what he represents as a unifying factor in the PNP, someone that has integrity, someone that um, has love for clean hands and a clean heart and deals with people with respect, and somebody that will be able to return the party to some semblance of normalcy meaning that the party be united and again, not just united for united sake, but united around a philosophy of equality and access to opportunity and social justice. Mr. Anderson says the margin of error was plus or minus three percentage points at 95% confidence level. He says respondents were not asked which PNP presidential candidate is more likely to defeat Andrew Holness. Meanwhile, a poll conducted by Blue Dot Insights and commissioned by Hannah's camp is expected to show her comfortably ahead of Golding. Laren Peretz, the founder of Blue Dot Insights, a data intelligence firm, his favorability poll findings are to be published today. The margin of error was plus or minus 5% and was conducted between October 28 and October 31. So who do you believe would be more likely to defeat Andrew Holness? Um, 46% Lisa Hanna, 36% Mark Golden, which means 46% of the population think that Lisa Hanna would be best suited in a matchup against Andrew Holness. A2, who do you believe is more likely to attract you to the PNP? 73% to Lisa Hanna, 17% to Mark Golden. And who do you believe would appeal more to the electorate? 52% to Lisa Hanna, 34 to Mark Golden. The Hannah Camp notes this is the fourth national poll in recent weeks pointing to a victory for its candidate. Hannah's campaign spokesperson Donna Scott Motley says they're not surprised 
but will continue to do the work to ensure that Hannah leads the party. Nika Lewis for Nationwide News. Now to the presidential campaign in the U.S. President Donald Trump yesterday spoke at rallies in five key battleground states on the penultimate day of campaigning. His Democratic rival for the U.S. presidency, Joe Biden, has been campaigning in Pennsylvania, another crucial state in the November 3 poll. Some 92 million people have already voted ahead of Election Day on Tuesday. The country is on course for its highest electoral turnout rate in more than a century. And despite the polls showing Biden in the lead, some voters aren't quite convinced. More in the support from Stephen Simmons. U.S. President Donald Trump visited five battleground states while his challenger, former Vice President Joe Biden, spoke at a campaign event in Pennsylvania. The Democratic candidate maintains a solid national lead in the polls ahead of Tuesday's election. But this advantage is narrower in key states which could decide the result. National polls are showing Biden ahead with 52 percent to Trump's 43 percent. These Biden supporters are confident the former VP will be the 46th president of the United States of America. I'm confident, but I'm still nervous. I don't think we need to let up off the gas. I'll say 85 percent. I am 93 percent there. 110 percent. I'm confident that he is going to win because uh, he got a great character. And I think uh, this time a lot of Democrats got more energy compared to the 2016. But some Trump supporters are not convinced the polls are accurate. They said you know, it's not presidential. We're now electing a pope. I have a good pastor. I'm not electing a preacher. I'm electing a president that knows how to run country, knows how to do business. I have made good trade deals for this country. Millions of jobs lost between Clinton, George Bush, and Obama killed it all. And a political analyst, David Mark, says Trump can still win, however narrow the path. Biden's campaign manager, Jen O'Malley Dillon, was cited recently, warning supporters that despite their side's strong poll numbers in national surveys, defeating President Donald Trump shouldn't be taken for granted. She posted on a Twitter on October 14 that there's still a long way to go in the presidential campaign, and that might be enough time, according to pundits, for Trump to stave off his opponent. Mark says Biden's favorability rating is 44.5%, while his unfavorability rating is just over 46%, per the Real Clear Politics average. Trump's approval rating, meanwhile, is 44.8%, with a 53.8% disapproval rating. But again, NBC opinion writer Keith Koffler notes Biden is leading Trump in the 2020 polls, but he expects election day to be a repeat of 2016. Stevie Ann Simmons for Nationwide News. Also in international news this morning, the White House has accused leading infectious disease expert Anthony Fauci of playing politics days before the election in an interview about the coronavirus. Dr. Fauci told the Washington Post the U.S. was in for a whole lot of hurt. He also offered an assessment of how both President Donald Trump and his Democratic rival Joe Biden are approaching the pandemic. The U.S. has recorded more deaths and cases than any other country. According to data collated by John Hopkins University, deaths in the U.S. have now passed 230,000, while more than 9 million cases have been registered. And that's it for the news at 7. I'm Tona Thomas.